Hey, Mike. Um, just wondering, since you, you've you've got since your your first impression in the spring of him, and now you've gotten to know Sean quite a bit better. Uh, what, what are you most excited about with him? Where has he made the biggest strides that you've seen so far? And what what are you looking forward to seeing from him most this month? Well, any any quarterback that has his demeanor and attitude and willingness to learn and uh, understands every day that there's something more to attain. Uh, his ceiling's very high. I think he can get uh, a lot better. And uh, so that's that's my job to help him along and to, to guide him and to give him the information that he needs and to continue to, you know, press upon the things that he has to improve upon and apply pressure where it needs to be in practice, give him difficult looks, um, you know, let him allow him to fail and then, and, you know, figure it out and then continue to build his confidence up. I, I think that's the process of learning. And, uh, you know, he's a tremendous leader. You know, Sean is, is all about helping this team win. He's willing to do whatever it takes. So therefore you just got to just try to help him. You know, you, you have to guide him and, and, uh, help him get where he wants to be. And that's, that's, he wants to be great. So whatever that takes, uh, detail in meetings and the technique work and watching all the film we can with them and getting prepared for each game plan. We'll go to Audrey Snyder with the athletic Dave Jones. You're on deck. Hey, Mike, uh, staying in that quarterback room, um, what have you learned or what have you seen from Taekwon and Christian Bayou since they've been here and where do they still have the most room for growth? Uh, they, they both have the talent necessary. Um, it's right now, the play right now, typical of young quarterbacks is just inconsistent, um, but trending in the right direction. There's improvement there. And, um, you know, you know, over the summer, there's only so many, you know, you can't really watch them throw the football at all. So, you know, this will be a big fall camp for them. Growth wise, we saw a, a big increase uh, from practice one to practice 15 through the spring game. And so we need to con con continue to see that uh, that growth. But the maturity is there on both the young men. Um, you know, I think um, understanding what it takes to be great, um, whether it be extra meeting time, extra film time, uh, asking the right questions, uh, not being afraid to take a risk in the meeting room. I think they're learning that and they're getting better at that. And that's those are the things that that it takes to be great. And I'm not big into putting any labels on guys because I've seen guys change dramatically um, over the course of, you know, some guys it's different. Some guys it's the initial six months. Some guys it's 12 months. Some guys that second year it clicks. Um, I think if you try to put a guy on a shelf and you put a label on them, um, you got to coach them all and try to bring out their best uh, attributes and try to make sure that you're, you're trying to optimize um, their ability to make plays and to do what they do best and to help them be tougher, to help them be better thinkers, um, clear thinkers. I think those are all the challenges from each quarterback that plays the game of football. We'll go to Dave Jones with Penn Live. Rich Garcella, you're on deck. Hi, Mike. Um, how would you assess? You're, you've been known in your career for being able to hurt defenses over the top, turn them deep, and then exploit the whole field. Uh, how would you assess your wide re wide receiver crew, which of course you had nothing to do with recruiting uh, when you got here, as, as far as their ability to be able to do that? Yeah, I think a lot of it, it, it you know, receiver play. Um, it, it's interesting. Anything in football is is relative, really. I mean, success with the deep ball. You know, if you're able to throw it vertically, it means that you, you've uh, got the defense to respect your run game. And so I think that's a that's a that's a very important aspect of that, um, not to be overlooked. I don't think it's all on a receiver to just hey they got to win they got to go vertical at times. Surely they have to win a one on one matchup. We have to get off press coverage, and we got to win down the field. But along with that comes the ability as an offensive unit to establish the run to set yourself up for success. That's the key. Now, where are we as a receiver room? Um, not where we need to be. None of them. I don't care which individual you look at on our entire offensive unit. We're not where we need to be yet. We're always going to have that mentality. 
We have to continue to improve um, regardless of what last practice was, regardless of what last game's result was. There has to be a attitude, a relentless pursuit to get better and to improve. It's a very humbling game. And once you think you're arrived or once you think, hey, he's really good, he's where we need him to be, you're going to get caught from behind. So we're going to continue to drive our fundamentals, our skill set, our mental approach, um, our psychology, our nutrition, our strength. It's everything. It takes a village. And, and we have that support um, all around these players, and we have to continue to have that attitude and work. Rich Garcella, Reading Eagle, Corey Geiger, you're on deck. Hey, Mike, you obviously have a crowded backfield. What will you be looking for this camp? And ideally, how many running backs do you like to use in a game? I, you know, it, how many running backs? I would say three, somewhere around there. Some weeks you may want four. Um, some games, I don't know if I ever had just two guys go, um, but there's no cap on it. Um, you want to create rhythm. You want to make sure that um, your best ball carrier is getting enough um, carries to where he can generate a little bit of rhythm because there's some flow to the game. There's flow to running backs, just like any other position. Um, how I see the running back room and, and how do we get somebody to emerge? It's simple. You compete your butt off. You practice hard. You play hard, and then we'll figure out who emerges from that. And when you constantly compete against one another, you make each other better. And then your, your, your most talent, most competitive player will rise to the top. That's how it happens. That's the process. So everybody has an important role. So even though somebody's going to lead us in carries this year, right? Somebody's going to lead us in carries, but it's maybe the – third leading carrier that helped us become the most best, excuse me, best backfield we become because that's what competition is. That's what team is. So regardless of the stats, everybody's got a serious, very, very important role to push one another, to become the best we possibly can. That's what it takes to win a championship. We got time for one more question. Corey Geiger, Nittany Sports Now. Mike, uh, the expectation is this offense will be really good and explosive. In your experience, when you go into a new situation, how long does it take to get to that level? You've got Wisconsin in, in week one. How long does it take before what you really want to see uh, is showing up you know, on the field? I don't have uh, a really good answer for you. How long will it take? Um, if, I, if I knew exactly you know, how long it's going to take, um, I'd probably go into the fortune telling business. I, I can't predict. All we can do is plan. Um, look at where we are from a personnel standpoint. Um, we got a really, really huge challenge week one against Wisconsin, how good they're coached on defense, how talented they are on defense um, at their place. That's a challenge in itself. However explosive we have to be to win that game is what we want to be, whatever that entails. Um, that's the goal. All we have to do is go to work, play to our personnel strengths, figure out who our best players are, compete, make sure that our best players are getting pushed, uh, create great depth, um, understand our philosophy, um, our team's philosophy, and um, just put our best foot forward every day. And the process takes care of that. When will we explode? When will we have great production? You know, that will come with time. We don't have to try to look into the future and predict that. That that doesn't that's not very productive time well spent. Not to not to minimize your question. I think it's a good question. Um, but I hope that's that that we share, you know, that's our philosophy and that's how we look at things. All right. Thank you, coach. Players, assistant coaches, and coordinators will be available on the field at about 135. Thank you, everybody.